Okay guys, so here now I'm within Maya. In the previous video, I've already shown you the kind of method I'm going to make use of to create the landscape. So this time, let's directly go ahead and start creating it. So let me close out a couple of these windows. So create, no primitives. I want to go ahead, create a plane first. So the plane, I wanted to have a lot of detail. So let me go ahead, increase the number of patches from the previous example. I've given 60 patches in UNV. I'll go ahead and extend this. I'm scaling it up to be a little bit larger than my reference object which I'm making use of. So if I need to extend something, I can make use of this plane. Now, once that is done, the next step is to create this NURB circle. So the first thing I want to change here is the number of sections, the number of divisions I want on this circle. So I want 64 divisions because I want a lot of detail. So I'll go ahead and extend this circle and I'll pull it out a bit. Okay, let me go ahead and project the circle on the surface and before I actually do that, if I go to the attribute editor for the plane itself, you can see it has this node uh, connected, it has this tab here, make NURBS plane, where I can actually go ahead and still change the number of divisions which were uh, used to create this plane, which is a bad idea to have because uh, it's actual history on the object which is not necessary on the long run. So therefore, I'm going to go directly edit delete all by type history so I'm getting rid of that. Now uh, I can go ahead change these names so they are smaller and shorter so I know exactly what they are so let me go ahead rename these objects a bit so there's going to be a landscape shape uh, start with always small letters so landscape s is the landscape shape I'll give the whole object name landscape and I like camel casing, so S is larger. So you can see it's a bit smaller and easier to work with. Now, with this object created, I want to go ahead project textures on top of it. So let's select both the plane and the circle. I'll go ahead to the NURBS menus and I can project curve on surface. Uh, basically what I'm doing is going to surface menu and edit NURBS, project curve on surface. I just use the hotbox to get it. I'm using the surface normals to project everything. So project, I have my curve on the surface. I'll move this curve to the bottom and hide it for now because I don't need it. Now with the surface itself, I can go edit NURBS, trim tool, keep only the inside and remove the outside. And also the reference object for now is of no use till I actually create the landscape. So let me go ahead and hide this entire mesh. So. Now I have created a simple NURBS primitive object on which I can start applying the shader and creating the displacement. Now to actually apply the shader itself, I'm just going to apply a very simple blend material on the object. And as you can see, they came in with a default value. So let me go ahead, call this the landscape mat. And then I have the landscape shader group itself. So One thing to have in mind is probably you could have it copied so you can always make use of it every single place. So anyway, I have this done. Now to apply the displacement map, I can put in a noise node in here like I did previously. So I'll just go to 2D textures, pick the simple noise node. And uh, uh, once the noise node is applied, I could, I could really just go, uh, go into modify, convert, and displacement to polygons with history so that I can actually see a live preview of what's happening with the object. As you can uh, see, the object is displaced but I can't really see the uh, three-dimensionality of it because all the normals are still locked to the surface which we previously had. So I'll have to go to polygons, normals, unlock the normals so I can see the entire mesh properly. Next thing I want to do is uh, go ahead, rename this properly to know exactly what's happening but uh, I'm just going to skip it for now. I'll go to the noise node which we have here and uh, I'll uh, turn off auto load, come out here and first thing we already know uh, using below does not really give the best results for the kind of noise we want to create terrain. So let's go change it to Perlin noise so it gives me much better looking results. And next thing I want to do is right now the amount of detail is very low. So basically what Perlin noise does is first it creates this large variations in noise. So you can see it's very, very large variations. 
when you add a little bit more uh, depth it takes the large variations and adds smaller ones on top and another smaller ones on top so it keeps adding smaller and smaller variations as you increase the depth max so what I want to do is increase the depth max to as far as I can and then I'm going to decrease the ratio so that the depth max is just going to give me the right amount of value which makes it look like ragged terrain so once I have something which looks good okay so it just has to look good I'll decrease the amount of amplitude so there is no clipping on any of these objects okay so once I have this done I'll go ahead use scaling to scale the object up and I can go to the channel box and give it a proper value so let's say about 4 so at the landscape but as you can know the landscape doesn't really look great because it's extended towards the edges I want to make use of my layered shaders with a ramp to go ahead get rid of the landscape uh, values from near the edges so let's do that next to actually edit the layered shader we'll have to first create it so let's go into render editors hypershade you could probably dock it into one of the sites so you could always have access to this till you are finished with the work so let's uh, map out the displacement mapping we have now what I want to do is uh, I bring in the layered shader I'll put it in here now I want the noise node to be a part of this layered shader so in the attribute editor let's auto load things and put in the noise node we have into the layered shader and remove the default one we have and now the next thing is I want to use a ramp a circular ramp to get rid of the noise which is present at the edges and to do that I'll just bring in the ramp and I'll connect this ramp into my layered shader and put that on top of the noise so once I have this set up my displacement my layered sh shader is ready to be connected to the displacement but one issue with this method uh, let me connect it to multiply one issue with this method is now you're getting a RGB value and if I directly go ahead connect my layered shader I can only connect one color to the displacement value I cannot connect all three at once so if I connect this you can see what happens wherever there is red color values the displacement exists and then it's gone so you lose all of your values <coughs> you don't really want now I don't really want all the values to be taken in only from a single channel I want them averaged out so to do this operation I'm going to use the RGB to HSV converter which new uh, which Maya provides me so I'm going to take in the layered shader and connect the output of this to be the input RGB value and now the HSV is going to give me the value or the brightness portions of the HS uh, RGB values so basically it gives me a single brightness value which I can make use of so taking this I'll connect that into displacement I'll tell out HSV where V goes into displacement and now if I come back to my landscape you can see I have this wave going on here I'll just go ahead to the noise node we have let's remove that and in here you can see what's exactly happening the red green and blue values wherever there is maximum it gives me a peak where both of them are mixing together it's giving me a 0.5 value which goes down so this is exactly what I want so now once I have this let's go ahead to the ramp node and start editing this I'll change it from a V ramp to a circular ramp like we did before and uh, as you can see it gives me a crater like effect I don't really want that so let's remove the green value I have in the center I'll use the blue which is there and turn it to black and this gives me what I'm looking for so let's pull this in so it gives me a good looking result so I have a landscape which is created making use of this method so as you can see the mountains exist and they fade off as they go towards the edge but one issue with this is it looks too circular so to correct this what I'm going to do is make use of a little bit of noise in the UV portion so it adds in a little bit more variation on the edges so it doesn't look very circular so very useful method so let's bring it in a little bit more 
So as you can see, it looks much more natural now. It looks more like an island sitting in there. So now let's go ahead, increase the noise a little bit more. Okay, so we have this result. Now, what I want to do next is uh, go ahead, create the ocean, uh, the portion related to the ocean itself and match up the whole landscape with that. So let's do that next. <coughs> 